in this short video tutorial I'll teach you how to make a simple eco server an eco server actually takes an string as an input and echoes back the same string to the sender the initiation for such a server would be dot slash the server which is the name of the executable along with a port number as input so once the server starts it starts listening on the port number which we provide and waits for client connection as soon as a client connects to that server the client starts sending strings for example hello world or something else the server receives this string and sends it back to the client as is without changing it uh, typically forming what we can clearly see is an echo of the same string so now let's quickly run through the code top of course all the includes have been mentioned uh, for the various system calls which you are going to make we have defined error to be minus 1 max underscore clients to be 2 max underscore clients is be going to use by the listen call and would tell the kernel the maximum number of clients uh, to have in its wait queue max underscore data is the size of the buffer which you would pass to both send as well as receive now going on to the main program we've defined a server structure as well as a client structure of type sock addr underscore sin so the server structure would contain the port to which the server would be bound locally and the client structure would actually contain any client information connecting to us now sock is the server process uh, socket descriptor and new is the client socket descriptor whenever a new client connects to us we really renew this socket sock addr underscore len is the size of sock addr underscore in we would require this size as input for both the bind and accept calls now data len and of course data are quite self explanatory moving on the first thing which we do is start the server process now for that we have to first of all make a socket now because it is a TCP server we would use sock underscore stream and check if an error is occurring so this error checking is very important while programming for sockets moving on once the socket is obtained from the kernel without any problems we go ahead and fill the server data structure now in that the important uh, I would say fields would be sin underscore port through which we are going to mention to the kernel which port to bind to and that is taken as input converted from ASCII to integer and then converted from host byte order to network byte order using H tones now the interesting part here is that the sin underscore ADDR dot s underscore ADDR takes a special type called in ADDR underscore any what this actually means is that you are instructing the kernel to listen on all interfaces on our host on this port for connections so actually in ADDR underscore any is nothing but 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 .0, which means all interfaces on the local machine now once the socket structure has been obtained what we do is we bind to that socket by sorry bind to that port providing the socket and the server structure which we created just a couple of lines back of course once again the error checking if bind succeeds in binding to that port we instruct the kernel to listen on the same socket for max underscore clients at the very maximum now we come into the main loop this is uh, the loop in which we wait for a client get a client connection and then start the whole echoing mechanism now to wait for a connection we use accept accept is a blocking call what this means is that till the time a client does not connect to our server we would typically be blocked on this call and just be waiting now accept takes the same server socket as an input uh, but now it takes a client structure now the point is that this client structure when it is given to accept does not contain anything 
but when a new client connects to us and accept returns at that time accept fills this structure with the information about the client who has connected to us what is important to us is the ip address and port number of the client which we shall obtain from this structure also note that accept returns a new socket descriptor now this new socket descriptor is nothing but a socket descriptor connecting to the client so from now on whenever we have to send and receive data from this particular client we would simply do a send and receive on this socket descriptor moving forward we print that a new client has been connected and we print the remote port number from where the client is connecting and the remote ip this is once again done by using a conversion from network byte order to client byte order uh, to host byte order of the sin underscore port uh, field and as well a conversion from the network byte order representation of the ip address to an ascii representation by using inet underscore n to a n to a is network to ascii so once a client is connected to us we start a loop till the time the client is connected to us so what we do is we do a receive for data from the client remember this is an eco server so what it means is that the first data has to be initiated by the client the first string is to be sent by the client so we wait for data from the client by issuing a receive call on the socket descriptor which we just obtained from accept we also part pass it a data pointer as to where we want the data from the client to be stored and of course the maximum size of that storage so receive returns with data underscore len which shows us how much how many bytes of data the client sent now unless and until of course that data underscore len is not zero or negative we send back the same data to the client by issuing a send call as we can see the data obtained by the client is not tampered in any way it is used as is and just sent through the same socket descriptor connected to the client without any modification now of course while printing it onto our local std out we null the last byte that is the byte after which the data is over sent by the client the reason is that while printing a string printf requires to know that the string is over and it detects this by checking for this null so sometimes what might happen is that there might be no null and printf might actually crash so to avoid this the last byte plus 1 of what has been sent is nulled and then it's printed on std out now note that this cycle is going to go on forever you know the client might enter something we might echo it back once again the same once again the same so when the client disconnects the first indication is that receive fails and data underscore len becomes non zero that would either negative or zero you can quickly check what happens by doing a man on receive so this is the way actually one should browse through the man page while programming so as we can see minus 1 if an error occurred so data underscore len would be minus 1 when the client disconnects from us and when receive fails so at that time we get out of the while loop and we print that the client is disconnected and we go ahead and close the socket which was connected to the client now we do this across our while loop again and again which means that a single client comes in we block here at accept as soon as uh, the client comes in accept returns with a socket descriptor connected to the client after that we go ahead receive data from the client in this loop and send the same data back to the client till the time the client is connected to us once the client disconnects receive would fail with minus 1 that is data underscore len would be received as minus 1 in which case we come out of this loop close the socket as we've seen below and once again go to the 
accept stage and keep waiting for new connections of course we require a little bit of better signal handling because now the only way to close down this server is to press a control c and kill the process uh, but just to keep things simple i have kept a while loop now let's try and compile this program fine it's a stupid warning so i don't think this warning is uh, problem right now so anyway so now let's start off the server process uh, let's say we give it port number 10000 so now our server process is listening on port number 10000 just to confirm this we can do a net start and we see that we are in the listen process in port number 10000 waiting for connections now let's try and connect to this port using the telnet utility because it's on the local host you can typically give this as the host name and then finally the port we are connected and our program says that a new client has been connected from port number 33186 and from ip 127001 Now let's try and write something. Hi there. As you can see, the server echoed back the hi there. Now once again going back to the screen where the server is running, you can see that sent message is hi there. Let's go back to the client window. Hello. Server echoes back hello and on the server console we can see another hello. So as we can see we have created an echo server which echoes back any string now let's try and disconnect the client and see what happens so our client is disconnected connection has been closed on the server screen it gracefully shows that the client has been disconnected now let's try and connect once again and press in hi so as we can see that the server process is quite stable it does not crash after the very first client it once again goes ahead to process the next client closing the previous connection gracefully so <coughs> in short what we have created here is a simple tcp eco server well that's it for this demonstration go through the code and make sure that you understand the example in and out now in the next example in the next video we'll create a sample client which would connect to this server and do the same thing which we did via the telnet utility thank you